Welcome to CBS 2018 here in Santo Domingo, the Dominican Republic, where I'm very pleased to be joined in the studio that we built here uh, with uh, Supervidi Aramvith, who is from uh, the Chulankom University in Bangkok. So, Dr. Aramvith, thank you very much for joining us in the studio today. Okay, it's my pleasure to be here. Now, I'd like to start off by talking about capacity building. This is uh, the, uh, the Global ICT Capacity Building Symposium. That's what CBS uh, uh, stands for. Perhaps you could, uh, there's been a number of conversations here uh, about approaches in teaching and learning. Perhaps you could give us a few insights into uh, uh, what uh, you might see as sort of innovative approaches to this. Yeah, so when we say about innovative approach, so it means that the teaching has to be changed, revised than the traditional method. So if we talk about traditional method, so it means that the teacher will be in front of the classroom and give like um, the, the face to face conversation and teaching to the student. But when we talk about the innovative approach, so it means when it's changed, so the teacher also has to change, adapt the way that uh, they teach to the, to the student. Okay. So, um, uh, for uh, example, yeah, like the, the course, instead of like the peer lecture, like for 16 weeks for the semester, so now it has to include the amount of the activity so that it could uh, motivate the student for the creative uh, thinking. Yeah. So or that activity could be like some the project based. Okay. Or like the, the teacher could provide beforehand the lecture. Okay, so it's, it's like a pre-class assignment. The student could uh, watch uh, the lecture, but then the time in the class would be more of the active discussion, yeah, or maybe some quiz to test the knowledge. Yeah, so that is uh, one of the examples. Yeah. So, and are you putting these ideas into practice at your university? Yes, uh, our university we have uh, like in the Faculty of Engineering, yeah, we have adopted uh, this uh, concept since 2014, and we have uh, several uh, set of classes that uh, we choose, or the instructor would like to try the new like uh, active uh, learning approach. Yeah, so we start from got many. Our concept is based on the CDIO the conceive, design, implement, and operate standard. Yeah, so for that, it means that the typical class, it has to change, like the, for example, the course syllabus. Yeah, have to add a little bit of the activity in, yeah, or some of the project based in. And teacher also have to go under the training, okay, so that they, 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 they know what the, the purpose of the new and they is become the student center. Yeah. So yeah, we have adopted that for, for several years now. We got the, the university give the in incentive grant as well to the instructor who would like to try this approach. Yeah, and, and so far it is quite successful. Yeah. What about distance learning? I mean, that's opening up education for people who might not be able to uh, spend all their time on campus or who might not be able to devote an, an, a, a specific amount of time to uh, their education. They might be balancing it with family and work and that kind of thing. What, what are your impressions on that? Yeah, I, I believe uh, distance learning is good, is good. Uh, especially like if we talk about lifelong learning. Yeah, so uh, I believe that now we have many of the, the open courseware, like it, in the U.S. we have a MIT and many university, right? But in also in uh, our university, we also our one one vision is also to support the lifelong learning to not only the student of our university, but also like the the, the people outside who interested to get like a new the practical knowledge. Yeah, so we have the Chulalongkorn University, the, the massive open online courseware. Yeah, that start in 2016. Yeah, we have 27 courses and we have like 50,000 registration. Yeah, so uh, I, I believe that that's quite uh, like it's opening up uh, the learning era. 
Yeah. And it's also, of course, attracting people to your university as well by becoming more aware of it, et cetera, you know, online, on that kind of thing. But I just wanted to ask you in terms of uh, further, a little bit further along in terms of the, the future workforce, what do you think are the tools necessary nowadays for people to be bearing in mind when they're looking at, uh, at getting jobs in the future? Yeah, I, I believe that today uh, everything is more technological driven. Yeah, especially like ICT play the important role on this fast growing world. Yeah, so the the student then they cannot be only have the technical strength, but the soft skill strength is very important. Like the interaction with other, the teamwork, ability to learn uh, more by gaining knowledge uh, from outside. Yeah, so I be, I believe that very important. And I think the student is aware of that as well. The company also, I think they, they also in need of that. But today they are more collaborated with the university. Yeah, like they, they're giving scholarship, giving funding support, or work with students on the project in the last year. So that's how they, they give some insight for the student as well, like what would be the real problem when they go out and work. Finally, uh, just, you've travelled a long way to be here for this uh, symposium. What's the value of attending this event for you? I believe that uh, it is my first time in Dominican Republic, and I believe like because this this meeting, I I expose with a lot of the expert, and also like the the key stakeholder. Uh, I mean, not in my area, uh, not not in my region. Yeah, so mainly like participants from. North America, South America, and Europe. Yeah, it, it gives me a, a very good exposure and also to learn the experience from other regions. That, that, that could give me very good feedback back when, when yeah, I'm back to my country. Yeah. Dr. Arambeth, thank you very much indeed. Okay, yeah, thank you very much.